Madam Chair, again, this, this case is again a request for these three properties depicted here to go from R10 to commercial general zoning. Again, speculative commercial use on the subject properties. Currently accessed off of Moss Oak Trail, the cul-de-sac there you see. They are currently undeveloped lots. Uh, concerning the comprehensive plan, again, within the urban service area and established residential character area. Uh, for conference plan guidance, CG isn't listed as permitted. Uh, the subject properties have rear access on Lakes Boulevard, which is a major collector. You note the commercial zoning of the property to the west and across the street to the uh, north, the CC zoning. Um, overall, from a planning standpoint, the conversion of subject property from residential to some form of commercial can complement the surrounding area. Uh, at this point, staff believes that the existing residents could be protected, thus honoring the established residential depiction on the future development map, while allowing for a reasonable amount of economic development to take place. The TRC did review the application and had no objectionable comments, with the determination from the engineering department that, if approved, no commercial traffic will be allowed from the residential subdivision to Lakes Boulevard or these properties. Additionally, it should be noted that, if approved, development commercially, the minimum buffer is at least 15 feet wide with a six foot tall opaque fence. And again, here's the view of the property from Lakes Boulevard. You'll note the view from the cul-de-sac here looking to reduce south. Panning to our uh, west here, this is the approximate property line of the first parcel. Going north towards Lake Boulevard, you see the property. And then to the east, you see the property as it's existing. And this is what the pos uh, possibility of the property with buffering and the non-encroachable buffer could look like with a 30-foot buffer. Again, the 15 would be reduced buffer with a fence, but this is a 30-foot uh, standard buffer between commercial and residential properties. Can you go back, J.D.? Uh, yeah, continue to go back. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you when. Hold on right there. Okay, so orient me. This house, okay, this is coming into the cul-de-sac. Okay, gotcha, thank you. All right, Commissioner Willis, you have a question? I understand you to say that you would not have any commercial traffic coming out onto Lakes Boulevard or? No, sorry, no commercial traffic coming down to Moss Oak. Gotcha. I believe I misspoke. Yeah, no, I believe I misspoke. If it approved, it would have to be GDOT conditioned uh, for Lakes Boulevard access. So GDOT would make the determination. So that's the property we're looking at right, right here behind the house, correct? That's right. The three properties. Yeah. And this, is, this is actually the cul de sac coming kind of <coughs> Standing in the cul de sac, looking, looking straight out. Is this unbuilt lot on the left? Yes, sir. The three properties in question are undeveloped. All oh, they're undeveloped. All three of them. Residential. No residential development is on them. Okay. Yeah, so they're uh, J.D., how long is the uh, current zoning on these parcels good? How long do we have to back? Uh, at least since 2006. I would imagine the residential property Zoning has been there since the uh, property was platted in 1972. And right now, there's nothing on the property at the moment. We'll see it or Correct. Natural vegetation. Okay. And everything on the other side is already CG? Yes, ma'am. That is the property to the west, the Dairy Queen property. Right. The property to the east is residential still and it has the house on it. questions before we open up. All right, we'll open it up. Is there anyone tonight wishing to speak on behalf of this project? If you'll come forward, please. Thank you. 
through the cul de sac to a residential neighborhood. And I called JR and said, These are concerns that I've heard. And his response was, We don't need a gas station there. We don't need a liquor store there. Uh, we don't need to take traffic out through that cul de sac. I don't want to do that. So I make the point that this is not an out of town developer. This is the owner of the golf course that you can see on the he is concerned about how his neighbors feel, and he is going to continue to discuss this with I can tell you, the, the objections that we heard today, he would have no issue restricting liquor stores, gas stations, accessing the cul de sac out through the neighborhood. And he said he's been talking to his neighbors, and he certainly has talked to all of them, certainly has talked to many people. But that is his concern. And these are three vacant lots that have been for residential use for over 50 years. And they sit undeveloped. So I'll just ask, is that the best use of the land along 376 if no one had wanted to build a house there? And it's been owned by multiple parties over the years. There's been no residential development there. Commercial, and this is a growing area. Commercial is, is decided. JR is, does not want to do something that makes his golf course look worse. And he doesn't want to make any of these qualities to look here. He, he cares, and, and we're going to continue to talk to him and find out if he's concerned. So we're going to try to. Come back to the best of us possible. For tonight, I know that you don't have time. I don't know. That, I know that we don't have time for the ability to come up with all of the existing concerns and, and the conditions to place on the property. But that is the desire. For now, I just want to make the point that traffic is continuing along 376. It's continuing to increase. It was originally intended to be residential use, but after being transferred to multiple parties over 50 years. That's the purpose of just not taking part. So that's why we're asking for it to be this. Questions? So I know you mentioned some of the things that one of the owners um, said he would not want to be there that we didn't need there. I know you don't have a crystal ball necessarily, but what, do you have any idea what he thinks should be there? He thinks that the area needs more places to be. Made that comment to me earlier that he, that's what he would like to see there. But that would be the desire. Now, I don't know what would come up. I can't answer all the different questions. But that was the comment I received earlier when I asked him. It was a difficult question. I appreciate your comment. Any other questions? Did uh, the owner, has he owned this property all along or has he been purchased recently in the past year? Uh, there are three, like 50 years they've been. So it was the plat was from 1972, so that's when I came up with that number. Okay. But there have been several owners over the last few years. I've got the deeds that were submitted with the applications, and there are actually three separate owners of this property, and they've owned it for different amounts of time. How long has this uh, owner had the property?
So, regardless, he yeah, didn't just buy the property. He didn't just buy right. property. Right. Exactly, for quite some time. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Quick question for JD Map Chair. Um, JD, I'm referring to this map here. Uh, it's only location map. Shows the cold site. <clears throat> so basically, what we have is the cold site with no building on it so far. Is that right? Not on the three subject parks. Yeah. Now, what are the size of the lots on either side of this property that we're discussing this evening? So, this one will just be so. Yeah, I know that. Yeah, we just. We just we're talking about the two just, here where people are living. They're zoned R10, I believe they're over a third acre, probably closer to half acre. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Jack. All right. Anyone else wishing to speak on behalf? All right. We'll open it up to those wishing to speak against. And if you'll come forward with your name and address, please. Trail cold side. First time I heard of this, the 
just five days ago. Um, this is clearly a part of the Frampton Lake residential development, accessible only on Moss Oak Trail in the Frampton Lake development, established for close to 50 years, as they mentioned, 1972. To my more than uh, two more, to my knowledge, the Francis Lake residential development was close to 300 homes, approximately a thousand residents, a golf course, and a once pristine, scenic, beautiful, approximately 100 acre Francis Lake is the only development with all of these features, not only in Lowndes County but all of nearby South Georgia and, and North Florida. I want to emphasize the ecological impacts of this proposed zoning change. All of these proposed, these three proposed commercial, uh, the other three or the dollar store, excuse me. All of those, those, all of those, those proposed commercial options next to the dollar store all the way over to the post to these proposed block from the Los Trail have their drainage connected to the curb and gutter system on Lex Boulevard. This all empties into a 30 inch concrete pipe which goes under Los Trail and empties unimpeded into Francis Lake. And the I'll keep reading but I'll Talked about that. I am confident that an extremely high percentage of Francis Lake re area residents will strongly object to this entire proposal, especially when they become more aware of it, including the added large scale the pollution pouring into Francis Lake from all of this commercial encroachment. This massive drainage and runoff directly into Francis Lake will carry every kind of trash, garbage, food, grease, and general debris. In addition, this runoff will carry oil, other lubricants, antifreeze, huge numbers of cigarette, cigarette butts, and some of the extra from tens of thousands of dollars a year, as you all see around all these um, fast food places. This whole road here is nothing but fast food places. Three over here, three over here, and all the roads right there in the front of, you know, where the two, the two you know, holes in the golf course were. And there's also plenty of other options around there. There's a, the old uh, Chick-fil-A sits down the street that the least of the Denise had worked out in. If I were 20, 25 years younger, I would, I would put a bit of business there myself. The Mike Pauline is the owner. It's such a great location. There's a Chinese restaurant sitting there losing money every day. And they, they have somebody offered them uh, right in front of Gwen Dixie, right next to it. And somebody offered them money uh, to be top. That would be a great location for a fast food place. There could be out parcels in front of the Wind Dixie. And Roger Budge has purchased that, that property, plus the old Little Store Plaza property. I'm sure he'd be tickled with that to put fast food joints all along the front end of that down there. So there's no need for each and all of this has to be jammed up right down there, up into the Francis Lake development. So, but the, and again, I use the, you know, the term residential repeatedly because this is the proposal to change this from residential to, uh, to uh, commercial. Uh, so I would say these three Moss Up Trail re residential lots with all of these horrible invasive ramifications and adjacent to and across the street from these longest established residential homes is the horrible idea, in my opinion. And again, as I mentioned before, mm -hmm. that we only uh, saw the sign we did last week, the few of us, two or three or four people, received, only received this on Friday, it was mailed Wednesday, the same day the sign was seen. And uh, I understand, but I'm just trying to finish up here. <laughs> Ms. Wilson, I will let you know that you have used all of the 10 minutes of allotted time, and therefore your neighbors will not have an opportunity to speak.
It was actually 10 minutes. I'm sorry. How many people? Uh, how many people are online here? Okay. The, the four people that are standing behind you, I will give you 15, 20 seconds. Okay. Just give me your top line. I have to, I've only been there a year or so, but I am directly across from one of the lots that are taken down. One is property values that are down. Um, two is I do want to say um, I did go to um, uh, JR's mother to ask her uh, if we could purchase that lot, by the way. And we were told that Giant uh, Red Owl had already offered $100,000, so unless we could come up with that amount of money, uh, no, we couldn't purchase it. So to give you an idea, they do know what's going in there. And next to it, we were told there's some kind of steak or steak and shake or something like that going in uh, there. And um, uh, JR was the one that sold that small uh, dairy queen lot that nothing can go on that owns the golf course, he and his mother. And Miss um, Pittman, uh, she's been trying to sell her house for eight years and couldn't sell it and finally took it off the market. They want to live in the neighborhood. Jerry lives in the back on a cul-de-sac. He's nowhere near all of this that's going on. So when that's considered, consider that. All right, and your name for the record, uh, please. Kelly Wilson, 5392 Moss <clears throat> Trap. Thank you. Same amount of time, sir. 15, 20 seconds. I can be brief. Ken okay. Hayes, 5408, also trails. <coughs> I'm registering my opposition to this because I believe it will negatively impact the property values of the nearby owners and the quality of life. And I think it will also negatively impact the ecology of the lake with the expansion of uh, impervious services in, in that area, which are now uh, trees, brush, and would be grass if it's residential. And uh, I think it would be bad enough to encroach on into the neighborhood by a commercial property. That's all. Thank you. Brian. Thank you, Mr. Hayes, for being brief. Yes, sir. The little shop in 5390, I'm directly across the street from this. And as I stated earlier, um, I look out my front door and this is what I see. And I have a beautiful home, a beautiful lot. I put a lot of work and energy into maintaining that. And this will be nothing but a detriment. Uh, JR has also told me that he has a deal with Red Owl, even though the attorney said differently. And I will say that um, I believe we have realtors in our group amongst us here tonight that if those lots were offered at fair market value, we would make sure that they were snatched up in a, in a residential setting. Thank you, Mr. And Stockton. please, Mr. Willis, live up to what you said earlier about protecting the residents. Thank you, Mr. Stockton. Yes, sir. Very brief, please. My name is Jared Griffin, I'm also trail. Um, I'm the lot that will be right on the east side of this whole thing. Um, I purchased it back in March. I did not purchase it with the intention of living next to what's about to go on there. Um, you know, I took a lot of equity that I gained over the years in one home, sold it, and put it into this, and now you basically, you know, it looks like, you know, that's going to have a period. So I don't want to see it. Um, Thank you, Mr. Harris. All right, that closes the public hearing portion. I'll now turn it back over to the commissioner for any discussion. Any questions? All right. If, I'll just yeah. say, Madam Chair, the previous case, uh, mm -hmm. not that we didn't mix the two necessarily, it was uh, already gone, CG. I it was. And, uh, as a matter of fact, I made the motion for approval on that one. I find this one a little different. I don't think I'm going to be able to support the, the change on this one, just for the record. So. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Do I have a motion? Madam Chair. Commissioner Biden. Uh, on the case we're considering now, REZ 2022-12, uh, from rezone this from R10 to CG, I uh, believe the general consensus is to deny this request. Right. And is that your motion? <coughs> All right. We have a motion to deny by Commissioner Bailey. Seconded by Commissioner Willis. Any discussion? All those in favor of the motion to deny, please raise your right hand. All, right. All those against, and it is unanimous. Thank you. <laughs>